Hello everyone and welcome to the 10th tutorial in the C++ Beginner tutorial series. This is going to be the capstone project uh, that encapsulates everything that we've learned up until this point uh, and the last tutorial in the beginner series before we move on to intermediate topics. Uh, so before we get into that, uh, we need to go over null terminated strings. Uh, so you might be wondering how strings are stored in memory. So you probably thought that or knew that each character was stored in an array in memory right next to each other. So if you're going to store the string hello world, you'd have H-E-L-L-O space W-O-R-L-D, uh, and that would be it. But you have a null termination character thrown in at the end there that indicates that the string is completed. So that's what you use when you're iterating over a string to so you know that it's ended. So the last character is a slash zero and this indicates the end of the string and it has to be factored into the size of the array. So notice that the length of the string hello world is 11 characters however the size of the array is 12 because of that null termination character. Now when you're building functions that iterate over strings you need to take into account that null termination character especially if you're looping from the back end of the string. So if you wanted the D, that would be, or if you wanted the last character in a string, and generically, that would be not the size of the array minus 1, but the size of the array minus 2. Uh, so, and it is possible to check to see if a character is a null termination character. You just use the single quotes, slash 0, and single quote, and that will tell you if you've reached the null termination character. So you will need that in the uh, in this project. If you have any questions, just refer back to this slide for more information. So the capstone project, uh, we're going to develop three functions uh, that are going to be listed below according to each of the requirements. And there is a template file that uh, is provided online to help you get started. We'll go over the template as well. So the first one that we're going to implement is count character, count char. It's going to take a parameter of a array of characters and it's going to return the number of characters in that string. It will not take into account the null termination character, so hi has two character and the dog has actually seven characters because uh, of the period there, or eight characters because of the space too. I'm bad at math. Uh, and just an empty string will have zero characters. Uh, void remove spaces um, will print out a string uh, provided as an array of characters that does not have in spaces. So hello world prints hello world with no space. Pretty straightforward. And void reverse characters takes an uh, array of characters and that will print the string backwards starting from the last character in the string. So if we had the red fox prints that which is not pronounceable but useful. Uh, this is where with that void reverse character that you're going to have to take into account the uh, null terminated string because you're going to have to start iterating from the back. So that's just a little hint I'll give you right there. So this is where the template can be provided. This link will be in the uh, description. That's pretty self-explanatory. So this is going to uh, this is part of the template here and this is the main function where we just test the remove spaces function and the reverse character fun function. These should print uh, the output shown below. Notice that I didn't throw in a test for the number of characters in a string. That's because you should use the number of characters in a string as part of those two functions there. So here are the two functions that we're going to be implementing. Uh, count character. Um, where I, st I start out with some basic template here. Declare a variable that's going to be the number of characters that you return. And then you just increment that for every character and there you go. Uh, remove spaces. Uh, character count is the number of characters that are in the input string. And notice that I added one to that to accommodate for the null terminated string. So that's just a start starting place for you. Uh, and then we have a character that is the result array that was what, what is going to be printed. So you just need to make the result array be the uh, input string with no spaces, and then it will print itself.
and then reverse character, you get uh, pretty much the same starting point there. And I throw in the hint that, remember to take into account the null termination of the string, uh, and to think of what value is needed to start looping over a string starting from the last character. Because the actual last character in the string is going to be the null termination character, so what do you need to get to get the actual last character in that string? Um, so good luck. Uh, I'm going to leave it at the screen for a little while, uh, and then I'll go over the solution. But please try this for yourself. It's really helpful. Uh, just don't go look at the solution. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is the uh, blog where I'm going to be posting information about these video tutorials and other tutorials that I do. As you can see here, there's uh, links and descriptions for each one of the videos that I've done, as well as the uh, template code and the solution code for your reference. So just a heads up, this is onestopprogramming.com slash blog, uh, where onestopprogramming.com is just the uh, forum. So here is the solution code that I want to go over with you guys. Uh, just if you're having any trouble, I'll start from the beginning and go to the end so you can pause it and stop if you have gotten unstuck and you want to finish it by yourself. I'll try to go slow like that. So here is the count character function. So this is what you got and we're also going to need a character variable for the current character. Uh, and then we're going to do a while loop and then while the current character does not equal a null termination character, we're going to increment count by one and then change the current character to the next character in the string, which is going to be count uh, as using the index. And the reason you can do that is because count is going to get incremented every time unless it's a null termination character, in which case this isn't going to run anyway, so we don't care. So count's getting incremented every time so we can use it as an index. And then we're just going to return count, and that's all that is. So now we go down to the remove spaces uh, function, which is a little bit more complicated. And we went over what this line does in the uh, present in the template overview. So you're going to need a for loop, and I declared uh, two two variables in the declaration here, int i and j, both equal to zero. And we're going to be looking for j to be less than character count, and we're going to increment j every time. So you're probably like, what's j? j is going, to what we're, is going to be what we use for the index of our input string variable. So the array that we're getting input into the function, we want to remove spaces. Uh, so we need to check each character sequentially in that string to determine if it's a space or not. And then i is going to be the index of our result array. So the reason we need two indexes is because if we have the result array, if we have a uh, character that's equal to a string, we're going to increment both the result, or not equal to a string, excuse me, we're going to increment both i and j because we're going to be taking what's in j and storing that at the result index where i is. However, if it's not a, or if it is a space character, we're going to do nothing, uh, with i at least, or the result array, because we don't want that in the result array because we're removing spaces. So j will be incremented by the for loop right here, so we don't have to do anything in that case. We just ignore the space character and loop again, and we check to see if the next character is not a space. And if it's not a space, we add it to the result array. If it is a space, we do nothing. So there we see that the uh, j index variable gets incremented each time this loop runs, and the i index variable only gets incremented every time we found a valid character for our result array. And here at the end we print it out. Now for the reverse character function, uh, the same kind of initialization here, and then this this loop, this for loop is rather complicated, so I'm going to try to go pretty slow through it. We have an int i that we're declaring to be an index variable, and then that is going to equal the character count minus 2. Now the character count 
is going to be the size of the uh, input string, including a null termination character, because we accommodated for that right here. We didn't have to, but it's it's good practice to. Uh, I wanted you guys to realize that they existed and be able to use them, so that's why I accommodated for it right here. That so that means we have to subtract this by two because indexes start at 0 and our count started at 1 and then minus 1 again for the null termination character. Then we have another uh, index here that is going to be j which is going to be equal to 0 and then we're going to uh, do this loop until i is greater than or equal to 0. Then we're going to uh, i minus minus and j plus plus. So i is going to go down one every loop and j is going to go up one every loop. Why do we do that? Because we have to have one index to loop through the string, the input string backwards, starting from the last character going all the way to the zero, zeroth character. And then we need to have another index variable go from the zero index all the way up to the last index. So this is what that loop, this loops constructs for us. So then we just have simply the uh, string, the index at the i place in the input string is the index at the j index of the, re of the re reverse array. So that will reverse our string because we are starting with i being a large number and j being zero. So the first character in this string will be the last character in this string and so on. And then we print that out at the end. Uh, and there we have it. Those are our three functions that we had to write for our capstone for the begin beginner tutorial. And if you were able to write all these functions uh, and get these done with only a couple minor headaches, a uh, little confusion, maybe you had to look at the solution once or twice, then I'd, I'd say you're in pretty good shape. If you really struggle with this, you might want to go back and watch some of the older videos again uh, because it's only going to get harder from here and it's you need to have a good base understanding of what's going on to uh, be able to progress without some confusion. But if you're all set, I would recommend moving on to the next video, and thanks for watching.